What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. Today's video is going to be covering how to put together a basic collection view. So we're going to be building what you see here. Uh, I've gotten a lot of comments and requests to do a more updated video on this. So here I am. So if you're not familiar with the collection view, it's basically a view uh, and a collection of items and you can apply layouts to it to organize said items in different ways. So here we just have a fa fairly basic grid and we're going to take a look at some basic layout customization as well, as well as how to do all of this in code. So no storyboard, no nibs, none of that. So basically the more so what I would call professional way that it's done um, in some of these large scale apps that everyone uses uh, and YouTube is actually one of them. So that said, make sure you hit the like button before we get started. I'm going to be annoying and wait one second to make sure everybody hits that like button, helps you make more videos and keeps uh, you know, the channel engaged and growing. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer and have been sticking around for these daily Swift videos. That said, I think I've annoyed everyone enough, so let me stop spilling on, open up Xcode, get excited, and let's dig into some collection views. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, let's get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template here and I'm gonna go ahead and call this collection views. Make sure your language is Swift, your lifecycle is UI kit and your interface is storyboard. Go ahead and continue and save it to your desktop. I'm gonna close up this right panel. We're gonna expand the window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And I'm going to pick a simulator. I'll stick with the 11 Pro Max since I've got it open already. Let me expand this side as well. I'm going to jump into our view controller. And before we get into the code, let's go ahead and hit that run button to make sure this is building and it loads up in our simulator, which it does. Awesome. So I actually went ahead and grabbed some images from Google Images before the video. So let's go into your .exe assets file here. And we're just going to drag this in. And this just has uh, a few different images in it uh, for the sake of uh, you know, us seeing things in our actual cells. So all I did was right click, create a new image set and uh, you know, drag in images one by one. So feel free to go ahead and do that. But for the sake of time, I did it beforehand. So cool. How do we create a collection view? So we're gonna be doing this in code, like I mentioned earlier, no storyboard, none, none of that. So we're gonna basically create a collection view on here as a private constant in this view controller. And it's gonna be a UI collection view with a frame and a layout. The frame will be dot zero to start off with and the layout is going to be a UI collection view flow layout, just like that. Now there are different types of layouts, but a basic collection view, you can you know get away with using a flow layout. It's fairly, straightforward. It has some customization that we're going to look at in just a moment, but then we can go ahead and add it as a sub view. And before we do that, we're going to assign the collection views delegate as well as its data source, just like that. Now there's going to be errors that pop up because we don't conform to those protocols. So up here, we're going to say UI collection view delegate and UI collection view data source. And with those two conformances, there are uh, two required functions that we need to bring in. The first one is going to be number of items uh, in our collection view section. And we're going to go ahead and return 30. Then we're going to want sell for item. And in here, we're going to want to do uh, dequeuing of a cell. But before we actually write out this code, go ahead and ignore that error that it's giving there. Let's talk about creating a custom cell. So every single collection view basically shows uh, one or more different types of cells with different data. And that requires us to have a cell. 
So we're simply gonna right click this and create a new file. It's gonna be a Cocoa Touch subclass and it's gonna be a subclass of a UI collection view cell, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this a photo collection view cell. You don't need to check this box, make sure your language is Swift, of course, and go ahead and create it. And it will create this empty class for you. And we need to do some setup in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a static property called identifier. You can make this in theory, whatever you want. I like to make it the same thing as the name of the class for consistency sake. We also want to override the initializer with a frame and it's called super init with a frame as well. That should be a dot, not a comma, just like that. We are going to want to bring in the required initializer because it's gonna complain if we don't. And we're also gonna to want to do layout subviews and call super layout subviews. And lastly, we can do prepare for reuse. And again, super prepare for reuse. So all we're gonna do uh, in this custom cell is just show an image view and we're gonna randomly assign one of those images that we brought in in the XE assets. So if you recall in here, we have uh, image one to image six. So let's create that image view first and foremost in the cell. It's gonna be a standard image view, just like that. And we're gonna create it in this anonymous closure fashion just like that. We're gonna say image view, whoops, image view dot content mode is going to be scale aspect fill. Uh, and that's just gonna make sure the aspect ratio of the image and our image view uh, remains intact and it fills up the entirety of the view. We also are going to say clips to bounds, which is true. So the image doesn't overflow the bounds. Then in the initializer, we're gonna say on the content view, add a sub view for our image view. And then in layout sub views, we're gonna say the image views frame, and I really can't type today, image views frame is going to be equivalent to the content views bounds, which is the entirety of the cell. And then prepare for reuse, we're simply gonna nil out the image views image. So every time the cells reuse, it starts off with a a uh, clean, clean image view with no image. So what we're also gonna do, the last thing in here is we're gonna assign a random image uh, to our image view. So we're gonna say images is going to be a, a collection of UI image objects and they're just gonna be image one, image one, and we just copy and paste this a total of six times, I believe. So we got two, three, four, five, and six, just like that. And we can go ahead and now say image view dot image is images dot random element. And let's see, it looks like this is complaining, cannot assign value of type to an image because UI image optional optional. The reason this is uh, optional optional is the constructor for a UI image returns optional. So what we wanna do here is say compact map and just do dollar zero. And that'll basically make sure any, any of these in here that are nil, uh, it'll get rid of them. But we know that these images exist in XE assets, so they should not be nil. So that's how we create a custom cell. Not a lot of code, but a bit of concept involved there. Now we can go back to our view controller and use the cell. So how do we use it? So the first thing we wanna do is register the cell to our collection view. So we're gonna register the cell class name.self for a reuse identifier of the class name.identifier. Then in this function, we can go ahead and say let self is collection view. And we want to dequeue a reusable cell with an identifier, which is uh, that identifier right there that we created on the cell. So if you actually hold command and click into it, you'll see that's the identifier property we made right there. Four is simply index path. And then we can go ahead and return the cell just like that. And before we go ahead and run it, we probably wanna give the collection view a frame. 
So go ahead and override view data layout sub views, call super view did layout sub views and say collection view dot frame is view dot balance. So that said, we should be able to see our collection view now in our simulator. We're going to look at some styling of the sizing and all that good stuff. But there's our collection view. So uh, I believe by default it picks the size of the cells, um, but we're going to make it a uh, three column collection view. So let's take a look at how to do that. So to do that, we simply want to uh, customize the layout. So we're going to override rather conform to UI collection view delegate flow layout. And this gives us access to a couple uh, functions that allow us to customize uh, what it looks like. So the first one is size for item. And as you can probably guess, this function basically returns the size that we want every item to be. So we're going to say this is view.frame.size.width over three, as well as uh, the height over three. And I'm actually going to go ahead and subtract, I'm going to wrap this in parentheses and subtract three from each of these because we're going to have some padding between the cells and we want to make sure that there's enough room for said padding. And for that padding, the first one we're going to do is enter item spacing. We're going to return one. There's going to be enter, actually I think it's called line spacing. Yep, we're going to return one as well. And this should give us the appropriate size that we're looking for. So go ahead and hit command R. And now you can see we have three columns. We've got some spacing between our uh, cells so things are not flush. You can see things are flush on the edge of the screen, so you can actually add some insets there as well. And the function for that is section insets. And in here we can return UI edge insets with a top, uh, left, bottom, and right. So we're just going to pass in one all the way around. And if we run that one more time, you can see now we have a nice uh, spacing on the left, spacing between uh, each of the columns as well. And it's a uh, pretty even looking uh, collection view here. So uh, what's actually going on as we're scrolling and they're going out of view, we're actually milling out on the cell, the, the image. So if we actually get rid of this line, if we just comment this out, you'll see the images won't disappear as we scroll now. So cool, that's definitely how to put together the basics of a collection view. The last thing I'll mention before we wrap up is, how do you actually get a touch interaction of what the user tapped on? So we do that through the delegate here. So all you wanna do is implement another function called did select item. Let me make sure I get the right one here. We want did select item at index path, which is this one right here. First, we're gonna call the deselect function on the collection view for that item animated true. And let me just go uh, print out at this point uh, which index path was selected. So an index path has a section in a row. So I'm gonna say selected section is index path dot section and row is going to be index path dot row. So we only have one section. So that, that'll always be zero since it's enumerated from zero. Let me open up the console. You can open this up with a command shift Y uh, quick action on your keyboard. And let's go back to the simulator. Let me scroll down and pick one of these random ones. So if we hit that, we see it's section zero and it's uh, row 22. I guess in theory, you could imply that it's item 22 since it's not really a table view, but the row refers to the item within the section. So there you have it. That's how you can put together a uh, bare bones collection view. Now I'll mention that collection views can get very advanced and you can do really, really cool layouts with them. Uh, for example, Apple's own app store is built with a single collection view for each tab with a pretty, pretty crazy uh, layout going on in there. So I've got other videos to take a look at that. Those are called compositional layouts, but hopefully this is a good primer into collection views. If you haven't done so already, make sure you destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm and video engagement. Comment down below if you found it helpful, if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions. Uh, I upload daily Swift content, iOS related things. So subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to stick around. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.